Happy Sunday, I'm Ryan Chandler. Here's your talking points for this week. We're just 15 days away from polls opening in these midterms. It's time for you to get set to vote, but a lot has changed in that process since the last big election. The Lubbock County Elections Administrator is here to guide us through it. And between poll after poll and vigorous campaigning and oh yeah, one debate, we'll cut through all that noise and make sense of Texas's voting trends with Professor Drew Landry. From the studios of KMAC Television in Lubbock, your local election headquarters. This is Talking Points. And thanks for joining us on this Sunday. Well, polls open on October 24th to vote early for the races that will determine the next four years of Texas and beyond. And it's the largest election since significant election law changes went into effect after last legislative session. So to help us make sense of it all and to brief us on what to expect, we turn to the experts, Lubbock County Election Administrator, Roxine Stinson. Mick Stinson, welcome back to Talking Points. Thank you for having me, appreciate it. So we still have a few weeks to go until election day, but if you actually wanna vote in the election, it's, it's almost time uh, to, to get that done. The deadline to register to vote is in just two days. So run us through what people need to know if they still need to register. What they need to know is um, it is Tuesday, the October the 11th is the deadline to register to vote or make any address changes for this current election. Uh, our office is gonna stay open to 7 p.m. So folks that wanna come by in person or it has to be postmarked no later than the 11th. So if you do take the post office, you might wanna make sure they postmark it because that's very important to have that postmark on there. And there's several volunteer deputy groups around town and on the college campuses that are registering folks to vote as well. So they can register with one of them and it'll still be good for this election. Is that something you can do online if, if you just need to change your address or? Uh, Only if you're going from one county to the other in the state of Texas, mm. yes, you can, but you cannot register as a new voter online in Texas. Okay, so if you're not yet registered, you gotta go Correct. in person or, or find a, a deputy or registrar. And all, okay. all the post offices and libraries should have applications in there as well for you to fill out. If you don't want to come by the office, you can stop by one of them and pick one up. Okay. Um, looking at the numbers from the, the last few years of elections, both general and midterms, and it looks like we are set to have the most registered voters in Lubbock County ever, just uh, over 186,000 this year. Yes. Is that, um, does that, require the county to prepare for any different way? I mean, I know we've had some elections uh, this year in party primaries, but those are typically smaller. How does the county prepare for, for a major election like this? The same way we do for a small one. Okay. It takes the same processes, same procedures. We use the same chain of custodies. I mean, there's a lot of work put in, no matter if it's a small election or a large election. It's the same, you know, we put in the same effort and work for it. So. I know that there's been a bit of a learning curve since the last legislative session to implement some new policies and procedures from uh, SB1 that overhauled some, some election law. Um, what do, will be most notable in terms of the changes? Most uh, notable is you're going to notice that in Lubbock County we have 23 unopposed races on the ballot that you will not be casting votes for. They've already received votes either in the primary or primary runoff and it moves them to the bottom of the ballot, but you still see them on the electronic version and you'll see them on your paper ballot if you're voting by mail. But they um, it's state down, it does not include any federal offices, it's just state offices and county offices that are like that. So they go down and they're declared elected and so they will not receive them. And the next biggest change is mail ballots, the, the process and paperwork for voting by mail. So that is for both of our state representatives, our state senator, you'll be able to see them on the ballot, but you can't actually vote, vote for them because they don't have any opponents. Yes, sir. Okay, well, good to know. Um, mail balloting seems to be one of the most confusing parts of this. If you want to vote by mail and can't go to a polling location, run us through that. Okay, you still have to apply for a ballot by mail, just like you always have. But now on the application, you have to put either your driver's license or ID number or the last four digits or social security number, even on your application. Once you get that and it's approved and processed, we mail you the ballot, your carrier envelope now has the same requirements. Under here and on the back of it, you have to put either your driver's license or last four digits of your social security. Once you seal it, it has two seals, one up here, one here. So when it's sealed, you can't see that. And that is not open until after it's back in our office and 
you know, date stamped and verified and logged into the system. If you do not, we will send it back to you and with a correction letter and ask you to correct it and send it back to us with a new envelope. And later on, there's a process where you'll have to come in once we get to a certain date and time because we don't have time to mail out, you know, we're two or three days prior to an election. So we'll do whatever we can to contact you and get, you know, help you to correct your envelope. Okay. Is that the most common mistake that you've been seeing yes. with this new rule? Yes, sir, it is. How, how common has it been in, in the last elections this year? Well, every election we've had about 18% rejection rate. Now they're not completely rejected because we send them back to correct and they've brought that you know number down quite a bit. Right now we're at about 18 percent again but we, and but we still we're remailing them back with the notice that you need to correct that and to fix this so you can your votes going to count. So That's but, pretty striking to me. It o is. Almost one in five voters <laughs> yeah. are having their their ballot sent back if they're voting yeah. by mail. Yes and does that concern you? Yeah, it does. It really does. And we put information in it when we send it out um, explaining what they need to do. And we've had some that call and they just apologize and apologize because they, you know, but th they don't need to be apologetic. I mean, that's what we're there for. We'll help as best that we can, you know, by sending it back and letting them return it to us. And I feel as we go down the road and as elections come, this number will drop considerably. And we were down to less than 9% by the time we got through the primary, the city and school with the, and a lot of folks canceled and, mail, and voted in person instead, so. That's good. I mean, if you look at the, at the number of voters that we have mm -hmm. in the last midterm of uh, 2018, we had 92,000 people turn out to vote. Yes. If you consider the amount of people in Lubbock County, that is not a very <laughs> high voter uh, turnout percentage. And then you, you pile on top of that, whether it's 20% or almost 10%, as you said, who, who yeah. just are having their ballots returned. It just seems like it's creating a lot more work for you and for the voter. It is, but it's, I mean, it's worth it, though. Yeah. I mean, it's worth it to get folks to vote. I mean, it really is. Or I wouldn't be there as many years I've been there. So yeah. I really enjoy it, so. and so does our staff. So. Well, that's good. Yeah. There should be no doubt that this election is, is ran well and um, efficient and, and most importantly, it does not have any kind of fraud in it, right? Because that, that is ostensibly what this is trying to, yes. to, to prevent, right? Yes, sir. It, it is. That was one of the reasons for doing that. So. How, how much fraud have we seen um, in, in Lubbock County since, uh, you know, since this has, well, has none, been in place or, or even before that? No. I've been, right. <laughs> I've been here 19 years and I know of maybe two, three cases in the 19 years that we have reported. So, wow. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What else do people need to know to make sure that everything goes well, well as we head out to vote? Bring your ID. You still have to show a photo ID when you go in to vote. Your voting process has changed a little because we're now a paper-based system. You check in just like you always have. But when you get your access code now, you get a sheet of ballot paper. You go to the equipment. You're going to put in your access code, then put in your paper. You're going to vote your ballot. You get to review it. You print your own ballot. Then once it's printed, you have a second opportunity to review it. Then you're mm -hmm. going to take it to the ballot scanner, which is not connected to the, any of the equipment in any way. And you're going to deposit it in there. And it's going to read your ballot and count your vote. And it keeps your paper ballot because that's our backup for audits. Okay. Well, you have a lot of work in front of you for this midterm election, but thank you for coming in and running us through it. Uh, if you still need to register to vote, you have two more days to do that. And hopefully you know a little better about how this is all going to work. Miss uh, Roxine Stinson, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Well, now you know how to vote, but how are your neighbors going to vote? We'll try to make sense of this long election cycle and learn what's next in the campaigns with South Plains Professor of Government, Mr. Drew Landry, coming up next.